What's going on, guys? Welcome back. Hope you are doing well. In this module, we are going to be talking about the concept of view extraction and how we can use this to write cleaner and more reusable code. So I went ahead and set up the module already, uh, created a view extraction folder and a file called view extraction module. So let's just go ahead and get started with what we're going to be doing here, guys. So we're gonna be building out a very similar UI to what we saw inside of our loops module, guys. But we're gonna go over how we can refactor this code to make it significantly cleaner, more concise, and more reusable. And ultimately get into this concept of view extraction and refactoring here. So let's just go ahead and create it from scratch. Uh, it gives us good practice with like flexing those Swift UI muscles and getting those reps in, right? So let's just go ahead and create a UI very similar to what we see here, okay? So let's just go ahead and we can just use some hard-coded data for now. So I'm gonna create a scroll view because we want this to be a scrollable list. And then we want this to be inside of a for each loop. So let's just do maybe like zero up to five ID backslash dot self index in and let's get started with actually creating the UI. So if you guys remember, it was like a profile image to start and then some info about the driver, right? So we can just say image and I can say Lewis dash Hamilton dot resizable dot frame width and height of let's do like maybe 48 by 48 dot clip shape is a circle. Cool. And guys, we actually want this to be inside of an H stack because we need to put stuff next to it, right? So let's go ahead and just command click into there and say embed in an H stack. And then next to that, we're going to have this text component. And that is going to be Lewis. And then we're going to have another text component below that that says Lewis, or we could maybe say like, let's add the team name this time. Mercedes, right? And you guys see here that because we're still inside of an H stack, that just shows up next to that. So we want to wrap this up inside of a V stack, right? So we can sort of really start to put together these user interfaces really quickly now. I hope you guys are getting the hang of this um, more and more as we go. And that's sort of why I like to rebuild these UIs that we've, we've already done them a couple times. But like I said, it's really good to get the practice in and to get those reps in. So now let's just finish out adjusting our UI, guys. Let's uh, give this a font of dot subheadline. <clears throat> Do font weight dot semi bold. And then make our V stack alignment leading so that we get it aligned over there to the leading edge. Perfect. And then let's maybe make this guy uh, dot foreground color of dot gray. Right? And guys, we want this all the way over to the left side of the screen. And if we remember how to do that, we can just add a spacer all the way at the end of our H stack. And that looks good. And then, so on the scroll view, we could say dot padding, right? So that looks good. And that looks pretty good right now, right guys? Like we have this scrollable user interface. We put that together pretty fast. So what are we going to do next? Well, what I want us to do is extract all of this code that we have here for each one of these sort of driver cells or driver row views into its own subclass so that we can reuse that and make this more dynamic. So let's go ahead and below your struct definition, guys, let's make another struct. And we're going to call this driver row view. And it's going to be a view. And then we need to create our body, which is some view. And what we can do is just go ahead and copy and paste all of this code and put it right here, right? So what we can do now is just drop this driver row view into our for each loop. So that is the basic concept behind what we're going to be focusing on this video, guys, this concept of view extraction, right? So we took the view for that, all the, the code that builds out that sort of driver cell or driver row view that we're calling it, extracted it into its own sub view or own structure, 
right here as we see. And then we can just reuse that view inside of this for each loop, right? Which is really convenient. And it makes our code a lot more concise and a lot more reusable. So now, instead of having to have this code all typed out inside of this, uh, this sort of main view here, we can just utilize this component that we created. And uh, what I want us to do now is make this a little bit more customizable and a little bit more dynamic, right? So what if we wanted to display different information in each row? Well, what we can do is add some input parameters to this view. So I can go here and say, let driver name be a string. And let's see what that causes uh, our code to do. So you guys will notice now that this automatically throws an error and it's gonna say you're missing a parameter for driver name in this uh, sort of call right here or this uh, construction of your driver row view. And that's because we have specified that this needs to be an input parameter for this view. We're saying that, hey, every time you wanna create a driver row view, you have to pass in a driver name. So let's go ahead and hit fix and it'll add that for us. And the first one we're gonna do is Lewis Hamilton, right? And then we're gonna replace this guy right here with our driver name, right? So now you guys can see that we are getting back the driver name that we passed in. So what I actually want us to do guys is remove this from our for each loop and just paste that in there. And then we can create another driver row view with a different driver name. So I could go here and now I could say, Max for stopping. Driver row view. Checo Perez, right? And then let's maybe make one more. Fernando Alonso, right? So we can already see here how this has become a little bit more dynamic, right? And this is a super clean implementation. In order to create this view, all we need to do is use this component that we created and pass it a driver name and we can start to display more dynamic data. And we can take this a step further and add some more input parameters to this. So let's say I also want a different image to show up for each guy and a different team name. So I can just add those as input parameters as well. I can say let image name, which is a string, and let team name, which is a string. And here, I'm gonna replace this with team name, and I'm gonna replace this with image name. And this is gonna throw errors in each one of these driver row views, because I need to pass in that data now. So I, need, I can say image name, Lewis dash, Hamilton, team name, Mercedes, right? And now I have to do the same thing here. Image name, Max dash, we're stopping. Team name is Red Bull. And then let's just go ahead and finish this out, guys. Image name. Checo dash Perez, team name Red Bull, and image name dash Alonzo, team name is Aston Martin, right? So you guys will notice that now this gives me a fully dynamic user interface, right? Like all of these are now displaying their own unique individual data sets or information about each driver, which is really awesome. And we were able to do that because of these input parameters that we created in this sort of sub view component that we created here. So that gives you guys an idea of how to utilize view extraction in your code and how to make things a lot more concise and a lot more reusable and it makes your code a lot e easier to scale, right? Now, in the next one, we are gonna be getting into the concept of data models, guys, so that we can utilize a loop and loop through some sort of structure in order to accomplish this same effect. You guys notice here that we're not within a for each loop and this isn't fully dynamic in the sense that we could, uh, where we might want to display like information that comes from a data set, like an array, right? Um, we're gonna be going over how to accomplish that in the next video, but this is a really, really good technique to have in your toolbox as a developer, guys. Like I said, it allows you to develop code that is significantly easier to scale, maintain, and customize, and also reuse. And that's what we did here. We created a reusable component and passed data in to each one of those components so that we could display a, dyna a dynamic list of data, which is really awesome. We're gonna be using this technique quite a bit throughout the rest of this bootcamp. So uh, in the next one, guys, like I said, we're gonna be getting into the concept of data models. So get excited for that. We'll see you there. Peace.